Getting ready for the new year with a special extravaganza. Ooh. So, um, and I hope that we will be able to also bring in some new people and new partners. Bring your friends. Pack. Yes, so please tell your friends about it. Anyone that you think may be interested in coming and learning oh. here, please encourage them. Contact me. I'm putting together partners now. The more names I have, the better I can match everyone up. So, please send them my way. Um, so, in honor of um, the return of one of our special sor- uh, Torch staff members, Rabbi Yaakov Wolby, he will be speaking tonight. So. And I just, I'm sorry, before we start speaking, I just want to say a uh, quick thank you to the sponsor of this evening, the sponsor of the refreshments for tonight to uh, Jacob Edelman. He is sponsored it in dedication to uh, Rabbi Bosco, especially, and all the Rabbi and rabbis of Torah and family. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Chavidra, and thank you, uh, Jacob, for sponsoring. So, you know, we're almost done the book of Durani, Book of Dorm, and we're almost done the whole Torah, and you know, what's the bottom line? Like, what, what's the overarching message? What's the takeaway? What is really the distilled version of all of Torah? And that uh, answer to that uh, a tantalizing question is found in this week's Parsha. It's a verse that I, I think uh, Moses hid it at the end of the Parsha. So most people would, be, would get so caught up at the beginning of the Parsha, and they'll just miss it. <laughs> And by the time they hear it on Shabbos, they're ready to go to the next week's parasha, and they won't actually stop and ruminate over it because it's so powerful and so provocative. So it says, this is chapter 10, verse 12, V'ata Yisrael, and now, O Israel, Ma Hashem Elokecha Shoel Mi'imach. What does the Almighty ask of you? It's like Moses has been talking to the nation for 40 years. And he's been harboring this message until he's on his deathbed, and he's finally going to reveal the message, what does the Almighty actually want from us? And if you think about it, this is a really bizarre question. Because, you know, we go to chapter 9, and we find all these things that the Almighty wants of us. We go to chapter 11, and we find more things that the Almighty wants of us. And the whole Torah, and all the mitzvahs, they're all things that the Almighty wants of us. And Moses is like, okay, Let's let's cut to the chase. What does the Almighty actually want? It's a little bit bizarre. Isn't all of Torah the revealed wisdom, the revealed mind, the desire, so to speak, of God, the directive of God, the commandment of God? What is this idea that most like, okay, I'll tell you what he really actually wants? That's, I think, a question on the question. But you read the answer, the revelation, what does he actually want, and you have even more questions. What is it? What's the simple thing? What's this bottom line? Well, what's this one thing that the Almighty really wants? And Moses starts delineating everything. He says, to fear God, to go in God's ways, to love God, to worship God with all your heart and with all your soul, and to do all the mitzvahs of God. <laughs> We've been promised flying cars, and what do we get? 140 characters in Twitter, right? 
We've been promised every, like, the, 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 the one thing that the Almighty wants of us, and he starts listing everything. He says, well, to love God and to fear God and to go in God's ways and to worship God with all the hearts of our souls and to do all the mitzvahs. What is going on? Now, moreover, if we look at a list of 613 mitzvahs, included in that list is to love God and to fear God and to worship God and to go in God's ways. So all the things that we're being presented here as like the alternative. Give me the give me the shortened, abridged version of Torah. What's the what's the abstract? Distill to me. What's the mission statement? What's the one line? What does God really want of us? Yeah, there's 613 mitzvahs, but what does He really want of us? What's the bottom line? And He lists things that are included in the grander, larger corpus mitzvahs, four mitzvahs that are part of the rest of the Torah. So I saw an answer um, a couple of years ago that I uh, really liked, and I um, adapted a little bit. And I think it's maybe, maybe here is like, maybe we can answer all our questions, but also deduce from this a very powerful insight that really uh, pervades our entire spiritual life. You know, as a child, hopefully we get good Jewish education. And we're told, well, on Shabbos, you can't turn on the light, and we don't drive the car, and this is, we, we pray, and if you have the hot dog, you have to forfeit the ice cream, and you have to wear tzitzis with chelas on them, right? There's all these mitzvahs that we're giving, list and list and list and list and list. And then Moses, Moses is like, there's, 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 there's a concern here, there's a danger here. Someone's going to say, you know what the mighty wants of me? He wants me to be like a robot. He wants me to be like an automaton, like an android, like a humanoid that just follows the instructions. Okay, I'm now, now, now there's my mezuzah, and here's my tefillin, and here's my prayer, and here's my Shabbos, and here's my blessings. And of course, those things are all, all part of the Torah. But Moshe is telling them this is his final message to the nation, and I think it's a very powerful message to us: is that the Almighty really wants a relationship with us. You know, people ask the question. You're praying every day, multiple times, the exact same words, every day for a lifetime. Doesn't it get a little monotonous? Isn't it a little bit uh, a, a, an exercise of rote? Doesn't it lose its flavor? <clears throat> it's a good question. Uh, the, the, the question, how to choose to answer a question with another question. Well, didn't you buy your wife flowers last week? And the previous week? The answer is, that what the Almighty really wants of us is not just a list of things that we do, a little boxes, list of boxes that we check, it's a relationship. The Almighty wants a relationship with each and every one of us. And when there's a relationship, then those things are not just isolated acts of religion, but they are acts, they are activities, they are mitzvos that really underlie a very deep relationship that we can have with the Almighty maybe the most intimate and powerful relationship that we could have in our lives. And here Moshe is telling us a secret. Relationship with God, what God really wants of us, maybe there's different angles. You know, we have the tzitzis, it's an example, it's one of those mitzvahs that really incorporate everything. You look at a tzitzis, and you'll notice, sorry that I'm uh, disrobing here, but you have these uh, tzitzis, which is emblematic of our religion, you know, there's a lot of rigidity. There's a lot of things that are inflexible. There's a lot of things that are tied down that are inflexible, immutable. In, 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 uh, you cannot alter them. They're inflexible. But then there's like, you know, 80, 90 percent of it that there's room to, there's, there's room to have some free reign. There's room to have self-expression. Well, Moses is telling the people here, and he's really speaking to us. He's telling us that there's four different modes of relationship that we can have with God. Four different modes of relationship. And of course, these are all these are all mitzvahs on their own right. These four things that he lists over here. They're all commandments on their own right. But every one of us to try, what, he, what God really wants of us is to develop a certain relationship with him and to a foster, to forge a bond with the Almighty via our soul. But there's different ways to do it. You could have fear of God. Fear of God, it's the mode of a relationship that we can have with the Almighty. You can have emulation of God. Again, it's another way to, 
to, to create, to foster a relationship with the Almighty. Love of God. I love that. Such a deep, powerful, evocative, emotional word. We can have love with the Almighty that, that's deeper than the love we have with anyone else. And by the way, it, it transcends our life. It's a love that exists for eternity, the love that we can have with God, and we can also worship God with all our hearts, with all our souls. And each one of us, Moses is telling us, he's encouraging us, find your spiritual niche. Don't subsist with the Judaism, with the religion of your youth. What do I need to do? How much wine do I need in my Kiddush cup for it to be valid? Of course, that's important. That's necessary. But what does God really want of us? He really wants a relationship. And each one of us, maybe with our own personality, with our own character type, we have to develop a spiritual persona that really undergirds everything. And here we see that there's four ways for us to choose, and we should choose wisely. But each one of these is a mode of a relationship that we can have with God, and that's really what God wants. So I think it's a very powerful lesson for us. These uh, timeless words of, of Moses, it seems like even then, there was uh, the Jew of habit. I'm Jewish because I'm a habitual Jew. And here we see now there's a way to shatter through the, the, the life of monotony of habit and to develop a relationship with the Almighty. And I would say we're about to approach you know, the month of closeness that we're supposed to have with God uh, in the run-up to Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, I would say it's probably not a coincidence that this very powerful, very provocative verse of developed relationship with God, and that's really what it's all about, is something we read uh, during these weeks, because now more than ever, it's a time for us to create that relationship with the Almighty. I, uh, I hope that we're all successful in uh, thinking about this idea and becoming really close with the almighty creator of heaven and earth. Thank you all for listening. Amen. Amen. Amen.